which we need to, except that once we're ready, we will sit silently for like four seconds. Excellent. Imagine a good smelling guy. It's apparently me. Alright, for our first sort of official video, I guess, we kind of had that teaser intro video. Today we thought, people know that our, that, you know, we got together, we're here now, not a lot of people actually know how we sort of met and got to where we are now, so we thought we'd start sharing how that came to be. So. Should I just take it away or <laughs> jump in and correct where needed? Um, so for those who don't know, I was married previously, which is sort of where Dawson comes in. <clears throat> and after that, sort of finally met its final demise and ended up where it ended up. A few months later, three months later, I guess, decided to... Yeah, I should start again because <laughs> I didn't just like, oh well, it's Your over means, and yeah. start into the. It was it was a long, drawn out marital death that took about four four or six months, I guess, to kind of come to an end. So I, I watched it die before my eyes, and I did everything that I could. Biblically, scripturally, I had friends and my our pastor and whatever that was doing everything they could to try and help us through. But yeah, so we, that happened, and then once that sort of all finally was not fixable anymore, after three months of that being done, then I decided, well, I think it's done. I guess I could start looking. I didn't really kind of plan on going into a relationship right away just because this was still sort of going through the divorce process and whatever, but uh, so I, I started up a profile on a Christian dating site and within a short period of time this lovely lady reached out <laughs> and, and me being the big dummy that I am was kind of like really, really apprehensive because of the distance and like she was beautiful and pretty, there was no doubt about that, but I was like, Philippines, that's really far, I don't know if I could handle a long distance relationship like that, and so we kind of shared a few messages back and forth and didn't really get very deep, and... Well, you have to tell them what you said. Well, I'm going to say what I said. <laughs> I can't remember what, like, it was just like, hi, hi, how are you, good, whatever. And very quickly into it, I was like, I have something along the lines of, I have to be honest, I think you're a little too far away from me. And she responded seemingly through writing that, like, she understood and uh, it was okay, no hard feelings. We kind of said, God bless in your journey. I hope you find somebody or something along those lines, right? And yeah. Then, yeah, and here's, the story gets a bit foggy here because I'm certain that it was within the day or like a 24 hour period where, because I just, as soon as I sent that message and we kind of said our goodbye, yeah, nice. that I was immediately having regrets and just filled with anxiety and I, was, I felt like such an idiot that I didn't even like consider it whatsoever that like so much of everything that I was trying to do was through prayer and whatever and to not have even prayerfully considered a relationship together even with the distance and so whatever the timeline was she says like five days I say like 
one <laughs> or three yeah. max yeah. that I sent her a message back and said like I you know I changed my mind I'm re really willing to give it a go if because you maybe are nobody's talking to you <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> Like nope. there's one like interested in me and <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> and, no, him. <laughs> <laughs> so then she gracefully said that yes, she'd be willing to try too, and so that's kind of anyway, okay. Well then, here's where I'm coming from, and I sent this big, giant, long email about my pre like pre yeah my my background my previous marriage and how that fell apart and all of that and kind of just finish it with if you don't want any of that baggage I completely understand we don't have to go any farther with this but it was sort of like a like I was 30 going 31 you were then no, you were 29. no 30 because I turned 30 in the middle of all that. Oh, okay. I remember that because it was very awkward <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I was kind of like, I'm, I'm 30 now, and I'm not going to waste time, like, here's, here's how I stand with the Bible, and my beliefs in, in Christ as our Savior and stuff, and then, like, yeah, all the history and stuff, and it's like, there, it's all out in the open, if you don't want that, then I totally understand, and then you kind of did the same thing, we are both like, no, I'm, perfectly willing to accept all of that and well we said that we were gonna pray yeah, yeah. but we didn't shy from each other yeah we Tell everything. yeah it was so we were our whole thing is we didn't want to jump into anything and probably those big long candid emails was actually what kind of like sparked something yeah. for us because we were very open and vulnerable with each other so it very quickly feelings were developing and we I, th I think we kind of I sensed it anyway I was worried that I was just gonna like plunge into this thing without like any thoughts or consideration or prayer or whatever and so we were always saying to ourselves like we'll pray we we'll make take things slow and pray about it and whatever but in the meantime we yeah, yeah well because there were times where we want to be well, we, we want to be vocal about how we feel, but then we keep trying to step, step back because we want we always tell each other we want to pray about it. Like, I I know by the time that I already falling for him, I don't know him if he's... It was yeah. very quickly. And like, yeah, because we were not even talking in mas Messenger or any instant messaging app. We're talking over email long emails and whatnot and which got longer and longer and longer <laughs> yeah. and longer with every one we sent yeah. out we came I remember sorry to interrupt being like coming home from work because the time difference 14 hours so coming home from work she will have been up for like an hour or something mm -hmm. or maybe two at that point she will have replied to my email from previous mm -hmm. And then I would sit there and spend 45 minutes writing a new email. I'd have my phone set up so I could look at the old email and read it while typing on the computer. <laughs> it was so brutal. And then, so we finally worked up the courage to do a Skype video call. Yeah, after a few months. A few weeks, I think. Maybe, like, yeah. Because I think it was, it was around the one month mark that I remember thinking, I think I love you already. And... It was, <laughs> and it was, yeah, because I think we did about two, two or so weeks of that, and then we did some sp Skype calls and whatever, and that was really what kind of was like, like this is real, was those Skype video calls. So, yeah, yeah. So we kept talking and sending messages. We kind of abandoned the email, we went to Skype. Skype and the messaging on there as well as video yeah. calls and stuff and yeah and then I ruined everything <laughs> I was waiting for that <laughs> yeah um, a friend
friend from hmm. many, many years ago. Well, that's kind of three months that we were talking. Yeah, we, yeah. we were in about March, April, May. Yeah, three, we were about three or four months in with our, with our relationship, which hadn't really... We didn't, we hadn't like become boyfriend, girlfriend, but we were still... Like we're kind of player partner at that time. Yeah, but with the intent that yeah. if that was where we were feeling led by God to go, that that's where we would go. Like we know we love each other, but we don't want to jump into... And neither like, one of us really said it, yeah, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, but we don't want to decide to be in a relationship without, just by our feelings, we want to hear from God at that point. Yeah, that's what we did. We prayed for each other, but we know that like, he used to send me like songs about whatever love. He used to send me like these moving on songs, and then later on <laughs> he sent he he sent me one love song, and I kind of like rejected it because of the background of the song, and you know that maybe there is a message from there. Or it was. Like that. Uh, Shoot, what the heck is her name? Like El yeah. Ellie Golding or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the I can't remember the song title. Love me like. Love me like you do. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So she, yeah, she did not appreciate that song because she knew, which I did not, that that song is associated with Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah. So. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, so. After three to four months of this relationship that we've been kind of slowly building and like it was a daily thing. We were talking yeah. to each other every day and I disappeared. Yeah, kind of disappeared, yeah. I a friend from at that time I guess it would have been eleven years suddenly was coming through the province to visit her daughter and we were on the way, like Dawson and I. So she stopped by for a visit and she didn't really know that all this stuff had happened and whatever and it all in a giant moment of weakness just completely unraveled and she was showing interest in me and having been going through the, I should sort of go back and say with the marriage that that was my ex-wife had left with one of my friends from childhood. He was in a rough patch and we decided to take him in and help him out while he was going through this and try and show him, because he's always in these horrible relationships that, <clears throat> well show him what like a good not dysfunctional home looks like and it would be a good example for him. We were going to church and whatever and thought like plenty of good opportunities to minister to him and it ended up being the total opposite thing. He ended up um, being the person that she confided in about things in our relationship that were not going well and he used those as my, he used what he knew, like my weaknesses that she had told him to try and win her over and that is what happened. So over a period of about four months from September to she left at the beginning of January. She left with his best friend, his, like one of his best friends in short. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Ex-best friend. <laughs> yeah, not, <laughs> we are not friends anymore, <laughs> just to make that clear. But. Uh, yeah, so I, not only did I lose my wife, but I also lost a friend of 15 years. And so it was, there was a tremendous, huge hurting because I only have a handful of friends that I would consider to be super close and, and one's connected to my youth as well. So to lose him was actually like losing half of my friends, even though I have more than two friends, but like I had him and Travis, one other friend that were like linked to my childhood. and went through a lot together and mm -hmm. so it was there was a tremendous amount of hurt and emptiness that I felt in that because of everything that happened betrayal. and then yeah the betrayal was huge and 
So I felt extremely lonely. I hadn't had any meaningful physical touch like <laughs> in a long time and and I fell into it because she started showing me those things and and once I caved in that weakness then I was terrified because of what we had been building and I just got lost in it and that was so basically um while while we were on agreement to pray for each other he fell for the temptation because of loneliness and kind of like that and at one point because i'm used to having his messages every day and then suddenly there's nothing or he replies really late and kind of like that <clears throat> and um, he also just stopped talking to me at all and well me being like not in a relationship for a long time it's kind of like and also like trying to include God in my relationship for the first time <laughs> in my life and then this is what I get so kind of like that so I was kind of like emotionally hurting because like I have told about him to my sister and my mother knows about it too and he's like this and like that and so especially my sister lay know about him very well because I sent them your messages so that like what what do you think about this message so I get an idea from them I sent them to Ivy and I was like hmm like, this is nice and he's kind of deep person and not just this kind of really really whatever and <clears throat> yeah so I was hurting at that time and eventually you had a relationship with your friend right because mm -hmm. she's staying at your place, you're kind of living in together. Yeah, what trend, what turned, what was supposed to be her just going for this visit to see her daughter ended up turning into a custody dispute and she was trying to stay nearby to deal with that. And, yeah. And that's where we'll pick up next time. We'll leave it on a cliffhanger, I think. <laughs> but. Yeah, so I guess that's it for now. Thanks for tuning in again. We'll try and be consistent with a video a week. We didn't kind of hit that this week, but we've been struggling with formatting and everything we're going to yeah, do. So we're very new with this, so we're just trying to be... Uh, it's just a family video. It's like to tell our story and whatnot, but we just didn't know where to start, so please bear with us. <laughs> We figured we might as well start with the beginning. Yeah. It's supposed to be, yeah, about our lives and what's going on now. It doesn't really mean anything if you don't know yeah. what happened to where we are now. It's, yeah. So, thank you, and we'll see you next time.